To start, we should say that ECT has a very bad rap um, from uh, movies such as One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, where it's um, portrayed as being a, a, a fairly abusive uh, form of treatment. But in reality, um, today it is still practiced um, in safe hospital settings where uh, there's anesthesia uh, present, and we use muscle relaxants so that people do not have the violent uh, types of seizures that are portrayed um, in, in the films. Um, so uh, the, the process of, of electroconvulsive therapy is that, um, uh, you know, anesthetist puts you to sleep, there's an um, electrical um, uh, uh, current applied to the scalp, and uh, a seizure lasts uh, very briefly um, and is uh, incurred usually um, uh, for a, a couple times or three times a week. Um, uh, for a few weeks and then um, may be maintained once a month. Now, in schizophrenia, there's actually very limited evidence that um, it's effective. Um, it, it's probably more, not more effective than medications for schizophrenia. And so we usually use it um, only for people who have uh, um, not benefited from multiple, multiple medication trials. And it, yeah, you know, it's, it's felt that this is a treatment of last resort that might be helpful. Um, it, on, in contrast, ECT is actually really effective for depression. It's more effective than medications for depression. Um, and uh, um, it's actually safer than medications for people who are pregnant or um, who are uh, very elderly or debilitated. Um, but because there is a risk of memory loss with ECT, we um, also are very sparing with, um, with our use of it. Um, the, Factors in schizophrenia that might make it more likely to respond to ECT include um, uh, something that uh, uh, where the onset is really rapid, um, where there are a lot of pos positive symptoms that might uh, be more likely to respond. And yet still, um, uh, we usually focus on medication treatments for, for schizophrenia.